Hey guys, so in this video, I'll talk about uh, gait, uh, decubitus and stance. So understand this, uh, gait is posture of a patient uh, while he's walking. On the other hand, decubitus is the posture when he's sleeping or lying. The stance is attitude of the patient uh, while standing. So in this video, I'll talk about different types of gait. So starting with the first type of gait that we call this a circumduction type of gait or hemiplegic gait. So this is uh, generally seen in stroke patients. So just uh, I want to demonstrate how this type of patient will move. So you will see like uh, a patient is having flexion of upper limb, there is increased tone. And you can see because of hemiplegia, there is increased tone. You can see there will be flexion of wrist, flexion of fingers. So this flexion attitude will patient will have. And there will be, ext there will be increased tone in the uh, lower limb extensors. So because of this, understand this patient will try to keep uh, his body weight towards healthy side and uh, he will move in this fashion. So this type of gait, this type of gait is called circumduction or hemiplegic gait. Second type of gait that we will discuss, we call this uh, scissoring gait. So understand, this is uh, seen in cerebral diplegia. So in this gait, what happened, like uh, there will be severe adductor spasm. So the patient uh, will be moving uh, in a scissor-like fashion. There is increased tone because of spasticity. So this will be the patient movement. So, so this will be like a scissoring-like pattern. So we call this gait as scissoring gait. So third type of gait that we have, we call this uh, a drunken gait or a broad base or wide base gait. So in this gait, uh, you will see like a distance between uh, two legs will be wide and patient uh, will move like a drunken person so patient will move like this this type of gait this type of gait we see in a patient with cerebellar lesion or uh, you can also see this in patient of normal pressure hydrocephalus we call this drunken gait or a wide base or broad base gait fourth type of gait we call this fascinating gait so this is seen in a patient of parkinson disease so understand what will happen to the patient there will be like stooped posture there will be reduced arm swinging and uh, like patient will have tremors. So this will be like pin rolling tremors and patient will move like in a short shuffling step. So uh, let me show you this type of gait, short shuffling steps. Suppose uh, if a person is uh, calling this or trying to uh, pull this type of patient, so what will happen? They will move uh, again, a slow shuffling step you will see in backward direction like this. And uh, suppose uh, if this patient is asked to turn, suppose uh, they are asked to turn right, so how they will turn? They will turn uh, end block. So how they will turn? They will turn like this. So this is uh, what we call, we call fascinating gait. It is seen in Parkinson disease. Next type of gait uh, we see uh, because of a complete hypotony of muscle that is seen in polio patient. So in this like uh, a patient will be using crutches. So uh, first of all, like he cannot stand properly. So you can see there is total hypotony. So patient will dragging his feet. So this type of gait means he is trying to drag. So this is seen in a patient with polio, dragging gait. Next type of gait is called a uh, waddling gait. So understand this is a type of a broad based gait. So here what happened, you will see uh, uh, like this gait is seen in a patient with uh, myopathy. So how patient uh, will walk. So there will be like hip will try to compensate. So uh, this will be the uh, movement of patient. So uh, we call this waddling gait. This is seen in myopathies. So next type of gait is called high stepage gait. Understand this. In this gait, like uh, it is seen in a patient with uh, foot drop. So for example, it can be due to common coronal nerve palsy. So patient is having foot drop. So this patient, if, if this person is walking normal, so like uh, he or she may damage his or her foot or toe, especially toe. So to prevent this injury, actually it's a type of adaptation. So what they are doing, they are uh, moving, in, uh, taking, they are taking bigger steps like this. So we call this high stepage, high stepage gait. Next type of gait is called stamping gait. So understand, this is seen in a patient with sensory ataxia or uh, dorsal column lesion, I can say. So uh, in this gait, what happened, like uh, initially, like when there's a normal light, patient can move. But whenever there's a dark environment in dark room, what happens suddenly, all of a sudden patient will have, uh, I can say a type of high step with a stamping like of motion, means like patient is putting stamp. So suppose initially patient is having normal light, patient will move like this. All of a sudden, like you can see, there is darkness, then there will be stamp. This is called stamping gait. So coming to the last type of gait, uh, so in this what happened, your right arm is rigid and your uh, left arm is freely moving. So this type of gait, 
your right arm is rigid and left arm is freely moving this is uh, like what we call we call this as gunslinger gait so it is actually uh, uh, not seen in disease it's a type of adaptation like uh, uh, many army people they develop this type of gait it's classically seen in russian president putin so if you walk a uh, russian president walk mo- movement like he walked with this gait we call this gunslinger gait